What is up? This is take two for Thursday. And guess what? It's take two because there's two people on the show. It's logo therapy. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Today, on today's show, we're going to review two logos from two amazing designers that I really admire. It's two by two. First up is Marcus Wrench. You guys can reach him on Instagram at Marcus underscore Wrench. He's from Hamburg, Germany. He does amazing, really beautiful work. He's a regular on our show now, as is Hadil. She's on our show too. Hadil's the returning champion. And you can see her on Instagram at Hadil S. Ahmad. She's from Amman, Jordan. Here's her work, and she does lovely work. So let's just dive right into it. Thank you, everybody, for your patience today. Up first is Yug Hangfei. Yug Hangfei, and it's for NEC Civil Engineers Soccer Club. I got that right this time. Marcus, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Yeah. Woo! Woo! Yeah. All right. We bring the fire today. Yeah, so I'm starting again with the video. Okay, <laughs> so. Let's start again. Let's do it. Okay, just open it up in Photoshop real quick. And you can see the bash is, it looks a bit odd. The mm -hmm. shape is a bit just too complicated for me. So I like it simple and trying to um, sketching something uh, simpler. So I'm starting with um, the sketch and I'm putting the um, the bridge on top. Um, as I said before, I think he uh, um, picked the bridge to showcase what um, engineers are doing. And mm -hmm. I think that is, yeah. Are you basing this on any kind of bridge in particular, or just the idea of a bridge? I think just a bridge in general. So the um, idea gets, um, yeah more clear mm -hmm. um, I try different types of bridges in my sketches just to to look what looks best what is working good mm -hmm. um, no I'm just um, sketching the name real quick yeah and as we mentioned before it's it's a little tricky to read that as civil in the original badge it reads CVL because the legs of the bridge connect with the eyes of the word civil. So I, I'm, I appreciate you pulling it out. So legibility yeah. is really important, right? Right. That was my intention. So I think it, it was, um, yeah, he, he wanted to, to do it like that. But I think it's uh, good to read it in smaller sizes or something like that. So mm -hmm. you can't, right? So I was like, I have to um, separate those two elements and in the second sketch I was like what if I just put the um, the football or the soccer ball right in the center mm -hmm. and this one is like a different type of bridge um, with the hanging stripes I don't know how it's called I think suspension bridge or That's something correct. Like. it is called yeah. suspension bridge yeah. very good I looked it up. Oh, that's so. interesting. <laughs> Look at you <laughs> pretending to be all humble. It's like, no, nah, I looked it up. Biatches, I got this. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. So and then I was like, mm, maybe I make a third sketch when I'm just combining those two um, shapes into a new one. So um, just um, make it a little curved and um just maybe i meant uh, just what well, i was like maybe what if i just um put one single tower in the center of mm -hmm. the badge mm -hmm. so maybe it's more clear and simpler so um also the outer shape of the badge is um, works quite well with those kind of um bridge type so so you can see um i think this one looks a lot more clear. I, I like that little line that you cut into the arc of the bridge. Now it makes it all dimensional. Yeah. Do you guys see that little thing yeah, he yeah. did? A little magic eraser or whatever he did? It's like, boom, there it is. So can I just ask you, just honestly, are you recording this in real time or did you work it out first and then go back and re-record it? Um, this one was real time, but I played like four times faster so okay so this is really you working through the problem but just really fast yeah 
Okay. Yeah. Right. That's right. Awesome. So is that the place where the soccer ball gear thing is going to go? Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So no the type. And I think this one uh, works quite well. So I think I'm going to use this shape mm -hmm. because it's um, it's it's bold mm -hmm. and it's simple. So it is nice. So I take it. Mm -hmm. People are saying they love the option, the third option, <sighs> and they like to see your process. Yeah. Very nice. I'm being right up into Illustrator, um, creating a new file, and yeah, starting with the um, with the shape itself. And now I'm just export this real quick, so I have a look at it in my Illustrator file. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Export this. All right, so. So I'm just I was just a bit slow to recreate it from scratch because I really did um, the redone the design from sketch again while I recorded it yesterday. So I was like, mm, "What the hell am I doing?" So <laughs> I had to <laughs> pass from time to time. Um, like this, it's like, mm, "What the hell am I doing?" So okay. So you didn't trace over it. You're going to redraw it again in Illustrator? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why'd you do it this way this time? I don't know. Um, I don't like it when I just um, paste my sketch and then um, build it uh, with Illustrator. Mm -hmm. like, it's it just, I don't know, it's just so messy. It does not work for me, so I don't. Okay. Just that's just your process how you do yeah, it's just my process yeah i noticed you're working on a on a grid right now right Because right snap to the grid every time mm -hmm. hashtag grid forever <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah so i'm just trying to make the shape even maybe just a little more curve mm -hmm. yeah just oh that's much better so okay so now I'll make a compound path and now I have the the, the basic shape and then I um, you see Sarah saying hashtag grids life. That's a much better hashtag. Grids life. <laughs> grids life, yes. Okay, now so I'm starting with the tower of the bridge and I tried to figure it out how I just did it in the in the first place. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. Yeah, something like this, okay. Somebody was asking, when you were sketching, do you use a tablet and a stylus, or are you just using a mouse? Um, I use a Wacom tablet, yeah. Wacom, you hear that? There's a sponsorship opportunity right there for both of us. Would be great, because I use a very, very old tablet. It's like a Wacom. <laughs> like this. It's That's old. perfect. Yeah, we need to call them up. But oh, normally okay. I just look at that. You added another shadow on the other side. Of... Oh, yeah. yeah, that was there in the original sketch, wasn't it? I yeah. just didn't see it yeah. as well. Yeah, <laughs> very nice. Okay, I think now I just no make the stripes, mm -hmm. and I think after that I'm ready to go to start with the type so all right did you calculate how many grid spaces this is going to be wide to get even stripes at the bottom yes you did <laughs> so I, I redid the all uh, the whole shape because i was like mm, damn it's like two two columns to write. right and, yeah 
I see. You guys see who's planning ahead there. Because you know that you have, what is that, one, two, three, four. You have to have seven, right? Mm -hmm. Seven stripes at the bottom with one in the center. You have to plan this stuff out. Otherwise, it's going to be a little weird on the sides. And we see this when, when people submit logos to us. We were like, what, what's up with the tangency? Like, why didn't you guys calculate this in your design? A little more precision, right? Uh oh, oh, now you're changing it. And what typeface are you using there for civil engineers? I, I use the Montserrat because it's so nice. Mm -hmm. It's a, such a good form. Mm -hmm. um, in the original design, he used Helvetica. It's nothing, nothing's wrong with that, but I don't know. <laughs> it was just not, I don't like the, um, I can see from, if you look up um, engineers, uh, by the way, I, I spelled it wrong. Uh, yeah, but the R is uh, on Helvetica, it has this little swoosh. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. You like so, the straight uh, leg R? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said it's Montserrat, is the typeface? Yeah. Is that a free typeface? Yeah, it's a Google form, yeah. actually. It's a good, nice, bold, chunky, sans serif typeface. I like it. It reminds me a little bit of Gotham, right? Right, and, yeah. And you like the R, the little R. It's nice to have those options. And in a sans serif typeface with this particular letters, it's hard to find something that's interesting or unique. So the R is the one that's probably going to stand out a little bit. Now you draw so, the soccer ball, huh? Yeah, that's right. I just forgot to make the soccer ball, so I have had to redone this from scratch, so I was like, mm, okay. So it took a while, so <laughs> don't judge. <laughs> You're trying to tell the internet not to judge? Come on, let's be realistic here. <laughs> it's gonna happen, don't judge. Have mercy then. <laughs> right, there you go. Don't judge too quickly, is all we're gonna say. Hmm. I think I can speed this a little bit up. Mm -hmm. So, okay. <laughs> Boom. There's my soccer ball. You gotta fill it with white? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Now, will you add an outline to that? Mm, no. no. I thought it's, it's it just um, it stands quite good out as it is because and at the end I was like um, engineering they got more different fields in engineering right they got like what if um, electric engineering is also some field of engineering so I was like maybe I just put a little electricity a little lightning bolt in there yeah a little bolt yeah so it kind of looks like a light bulb at the same moment oh yeah mm -hmm. i see that Yeah, Late just... night canvas is saying it's funny that you think that took a while for me. This would have taken nine hours <laughs> Even sped up. It's okay. We're all at working at different paces guys. Don't worry Don't compare your worst to somebody's best. It'll be all right I'm here for you So now you're adding some colors in here. This is the original no. color palette Yep, yeah, that's um, the original colors and Yeah that's the final design, and then I was like, mm, "What if we take another, another one like um, different, a different yellow, more bright, and a more like I don't know black with a pint of blue in it?" Um, I tried this as well. <clears throat> oh, I see now. So yeah. Instead of making it appear black, it's kind of a dark blue, kind of desaturated a little bit. Yeah. Reduce the chroma. 
And now I and just the put and the, the yellow, right? Yeah, now I just put the original logo beside so we can compare it. Mm -hmm. I hide all my junk. Oh, oh, oh almost. too much junk. <laughs> too much. <laughs> yes. So these are the um, final options. Mm -hmm. Great job. And, and I also got some um, some applications, mm -hmm. some mockups. Of course. Here we go. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's rubbing their hand together. Like here we go. Here comes the mockups. Bautista is saying, my God, this is very balanced. Woo! Thank you. Nicely done. Before, after. Okay, let me just look at this. Everybody look at this. Let us know in the comments right now if you're watching us live. There's 250 of you guys watching us live. The one on the left is the before, obviously, because it says before at the bottom. It's for NAC Civil Engineer Soccer Club, and it's a shield. So taking you really quickly through the process. Marcus was just really interested in simplifying and making things read better, reducing the amount of details. And you can see, instead of showing the span of the bridge in the way the original has so many lines of the suspension, he just reduced it down. And then he cut out certain elements of the bridge to give it a slightly dimensional feel. And I love that. It feels very retro. It feels very nostalgic. And I, I like it a lot. So very simple top. He's reduced that down. And having a little point at the end, not, not too sharp, but a little point kind of adds a little something to it. The other one feels a little blunt. Then the soccer ball is down there at the bottom. I think for me, I really like this. I think the soccer ball maybe just doesn't read quite like a soccer ball. It just needs a little more love there. But I really, really like what you've done. Civil is really nice. Big, bold. It reads from a mile away. You've added a little lightning bolt. Kind of just thinking about elements. NEC is a little small in here. I don't know how important NEC is. But I like it. Very balanced. Very centered. It feels like an instant classic already. Well, well done. Modern, well, thank you, Chris. Yet classy is what people are saying. Number two looks dope. Only the NEC needs to be moved down a little bit for balance, whatever. Okay. Why didn't I receive... No, I'm not going to read that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you don't receive notifications. Hit the bell. <laughs> Hit the bell. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Right, let's let's take a look at anything else you got. You got your applications, right? Okay. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. Here's the right. unveiling. Boom. Ooh. Okay. Okay. What is this? Is this uh, on like fabric a, or like a t-shirt? Yeah. A t-shirt. Okay. Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. What else you got? And then I got um also oh, some. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Oh Woo! man. Okay. Okay. Of all no, the mocks, of all the mocks, the flag with the smoke in the stadium really captures it. It really does. I didn't know civil engineers were so passionate about football. <laughs> this is really good. There's, you know, when you pick the right image, it just communicates a lot of emotion. It really does. It just feels like I'm there. I'm really excited. I can hear the, the, the drums beating people, chanting, whatever they chant. Love it. All right. Yeah, that's it. That's so, it. Good job, yeah. everybody. Get, let's give Marcus a big round of applause, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Woo. Woo. Okay. Let me get back into my deck now while Marcus stops sharing. So, you guys, mm -hmm. there we are. So up, up next, up next is um, Elder Pina, Elder Pina from Portugal, I believe. And the logo is for Fun Box, for Fun Box. And Hidil's up. This already looks really fun. I wonder what Hidil's going to do with this mark. Mm, what would you do if you picked this one? Would you try to make it a little bit more serious or what? Hidil, welcome back to the show. Yeah, Hidil. Hidil. Can you share your screen, please? Yes. Yeah. How do, you, how do you say your last name? Can you pronounce your last name one more time? Sayed. Ahmed. Ahmed. Try to try 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 saying the ah. 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 <laughs> Excuse me, I got something. <clears throat> Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I was thinking? Just kind of my American English butchering of your last name. I was like, I was envisioning you like a valley girl in California. And it's like, how you feeling? I'm mad. Yeah. Okay, nobody got that. I'm Thank mad. you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Houston. <laughs> all right, all right. Lovely to see you. Okay, she is her screen shared. Are we ready to yes, go? Her screen is shared. Okay, Hadil, take us on a journey. On a fun box journey. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun project. 
<laughs> can't like, wait. Can't wait. Everybody can't wait. Exciting. Waiting with bated breath here. Yeah. So um, this is a logo by um, Elder Fina. <coughs> it's called Funbox. Um, it's a family-friendly, affordable 3D printer. Um, and I want to, to start by saying um, I uploaded the project on Behance, but as a draft, I didn't publish it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, just to show everyone how they can upload their projects. I see. Just, yeah. Because many people ask me um, how to how do I up, uh, upload my projects? How do I uh, stylize the the presentation? So we're gonna go through this uh, together, and mm -hmm. after we finish. Gonna publish the project for everyone. Oh wow! Look at that. She's integrating a live component to the show. I love it. You're getting yeah, a lot of heart a live demo. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of heart emojis coming in the top in the chat window right now. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can't wait. And there's no no behance notifications this time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you figured that out, huh? <laughs> bling, bling. She just had her own sound effect going. <laughs> So let's start. This is the original logo. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I really liked it, but I felt that it was um, not balanced enough. Okay. Uh, the space here and here uh, and the, the smile under the V and the O makes it, the, the, I mean, it feels like it's going to tilt to the to the left. Mm, okay. I see. The fulcrum is too far to the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I started uh, researching 3D printers, and I decided to make a decision making or decision science for the research that I've done. Mm -hmm. So I found that um, 3D printers, uh, they mainly are rectangular or squared. Yes. Uh, they have a nozzle where the filament threads of plastic are heated, and then uh, uh, the software um, tells the machine how to uh, apply the melted plastic, mm -hmm. OK? Wait, why are you telling us about 3D printers? Is that what Funbox because, is? Uh, yeah. It's oh, an I see. 3D printer, it's uh, targeted for um, families and kids. I see. OK. So um, it was very important for me to understand 3D printers more. This is part of my research mm -hmm. uh, to decide the direction I'm going to go with. Uh, so um, um, almost all 3D, uh, 3D printers look this like yep. this one. Okay, so um, I decided that I'm gonna go with uh, purely geometrical shapes for two reasons: mm -hmm. because uh, the the boxes from the name and from the devices look like squares and rectangles. Okay, and because they use filaments, which are lines. Uh, I also studied the, the movement of the nozzle. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes vertical in a slow motion, mm -hmm. and sometimes it goes uh, in shorter horizontal movements also to build the products. Okay, Th this is all uh, very important in the building of the identity that I designed for the look. Uh, and the last thing is that uh, the major uh, position of the nozzle and the final uh, product is centered in alignment to, to the box, OK? Mm -hmm. So and this is the brand personality. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be, uh, because it's targeted targeted to kids, but it's also targeted to their families and for teens and preteens. Mm -hmm. So I don't want it to be too funky or um, too childish or too organic. This is going to be a very geometrical design. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's going to be bold, smart. It needs to cater to all uh, age groups for, for, for kids. Um, and I uh, broke down the shapes to geometrical shapes and uh, built a mood board of um, uh, building, blo building blocks. So, the, so the, the entire design is going to be based on the idea of geometrical shapes and building blocks. OK? Got it. And here are some logo explorations. Ooh. I did. Uh, I, I wanted this form. I needed to, the logo to be more balanced than, than being in a, in a long uh, format, OK, in a horizontal format. So I did some uh, logo explorations. This took um, 
I think maybe three days or more. I see. This is the longer part. Uh, I have a video of the logo reading that mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. I started with a square. Of course, I, I, I started with a grid, of course, and one square. It doesn't matter how, 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 what are the dimensions of the square. People ask this all the time. Is it one centimeter or it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a square, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> but is it 1.5 centimeters or is it one centimeter? It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. It's a box. So I'm feeling it. Yeah, and yeah. it's got a field. It doesn't matter. As long as you stick to the ratios between these squares and the, the lines. Yes. This, this is the whole concept of reading. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm starting to build the, the type. Uh, I didn't use a type for this, uh, for this logo. Mm -hmm. I built it entirely from uh, scratch because it's basically built on uh, geometrical shapes. Mm -hmm. So start with the letter F. With a very, uh, yeah. you have a very low X height on this one, right? Yeah. Yep. No, no, no. It's, it's square. So it, it had to 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 be um, a little bit bulky. Mm. And now we're build, building the letter U. Just using uh, shapes and uh, Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. And the snap to fit helps a lot. Uh, this is the letter N, two horizontal uh, uh, lines, and then the this one, I colored it so I can see the intersection. Just moved it a little bit. Of course, this this is not how actually I started designing this. This is after practicing maybe at least seven to ten times. What just do you mean practicing for the show you practice or just from previous experience just drawing? To the, just to make the video. Oh, wow. The, the, uh, the spacing between the letters mm -hmm. and how to build the actual letters because it, it uh, required some trial, trial and error. I see. Thanks for disclosing that. Some people think, oh, my God, everything is perfect. Hideo oh. cannot make one wrong step. <laughs> no, no, no. It was full of wrong steps. <laughs> Shh, nobody heard that, though. Don't worry. The deal's perfect. Okay. I I'll take that from you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you're drawing the B, is that right? Yeah, this is the B. Mm -hmm. um, um, drawing the, um, the little uh, spaces inside the letter B. Okay, I see. Okay. Everything is built on grid. Right. That's the, uh, the most interesting part. And you're taking boxes and you're you're rounding the corners using the yeah. radius tool, right? Yeah. Very simple tools. Yeah. Building uh, the squares mm -hmm. and line, uh, pathfinder and uh, direct selection tool. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Like and now we're building the X. Mm -hmm. Take it to a twenty uh, to forty-five uh, degree angle, and then reflect it. And then we're going to use the Pathfinder tool again, just to clear the uh, these edges. You said clear the edges, right? Yeah. Okay. I thought you because said clear the itches, and I'm like, that's an interesting way to describe the process. <laughs> She's clearing the itch. It's itching her that these corners are not what she wants. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they yeah. are, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. So, X there. Okay. Everything, uh, everything needs to be perfectly aligned. Yeah. And this is the O of the box, mm -hmm. but I did a uh, standard O. I did the, the box. It's just a simple, minimal box. Mm. The chat went super quiet. I think they're just watching in admiration right now. They're speechless. Yeah. Let's see now. So this is the one that got the, from the video, but I cleaned it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of, of uh, refinement. It says fun box. The O is an abstract uh, square. Mm -hmm. Presenting the 3D printer itself. And then I found that uh, from the original logo, it has had a smile. Yes. Which is a reference for fun. Mm -hmm. And I like 
I wanted to keep the the smile in it. Mm -hmm. So. Mm. Oh. Nice. I thought you were going to put that in the box, but you put it on the U. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, I started in the logo explorations. I added it in the box, but I was afraid uh, of the legibility because when you when when it's too small or very small, it's not going to show. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is this uh, this uh, emphasizes the importance of gridding. So this yeah, I didn't cut the the smile in the U just randomly. It's from the one of the X's. Okay? Yes. And then here it is. And this is the final logo. Mm. Nice. It's a pure geometrical shape. Mm -hmm. it, it is a reference of building blocks. But we're not going to stop now. Of course we're not. <laughs> you would not be you if you stopped right now. Okay, let's just be clear about that, everybody. <laughs> if anything, we're barely getting started. <laughs> this is part one of 45, guys. Hang in there. <laughs> just give me <laughs> Yeah, just give her a little more. You know, she had yeah. she if she had five hours of sleep, this would be totally different, guys. Come on. Four kiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is a mock up on a three D printer. Mm -hmm. Nice. It can be engraved, it can be embossed. Yeah, I like that there it looks like there's two finishes, a matte and a gloss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And this is the um, color palette. These are the filaments used in the 3D printers, the plastic filaments. So I took my color palette from them. Mm -hmm. And here are the building blocks I was talking about. Oh, nice. Uh, they, these are references of the products that are printed, but in a very abstract and minimal uh, uh, designs. Now, but now, these building blocks are going to go into the logo because this is a dynamic logo. This is what I like to do. Most of my projects are dynamic logos and, and dynamic identities, meaning the logo can change. It doesn't have just one form. Mm -hmm. And you can use all of them, any of them, according to the... And, and the, the shapes are replacing the original 3D printer reference, mm -hmm. the box. So you have the products are representing the, the box. Mm -hmm. So they're part of the dynamic uh, logo. And here you go. Oh, it's an animated GIF. Yeah. Nice. You, we use it on dynamic logos. Mm -hmm. All of these are the logo. Mm -hmm. But the main one is the, the, the one with the square. Mm -hmm. I think that's a strength of the logo that you designed, that it's very geometric and it's, it works and it reads. And so that you can have some, you can have fun with expanding the system. Yeah, yeah, it's very expandable because using this grid system, you can draw anything inside it, any other shape. You can expand to 100 shapes. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. you, you stick to the to the gridding system in, in this box. Okay. Fun of geometry. Mm -hmm. um, here are some uh, the the part of the identity are stickers and pens. Oh, nice. Okay using the colors um, and then I built uh, a pattern that's like a strip uh, from from the building blocks wow. to place on packages. Can you pause here for a second? I really like that box on the bottom where you have this white clean stripe against this colorful background. It feels playful but it's also sophisticated and it's hard to strike that balance. It's giving me an idea for an assignment that I'm going to send to the young guns, how they can design packaging for something that would appeal to kids. Because it's easy to go high-end, upscale, organic, super sophisticated, and use all the printing techniques. It's very hard to thread this needle of being sophisticated and playful, and I think you've done an excellent job there. Well, thank you, Chris. This, is, this, is, this was the hardest part, because I wanted to, to cater to um, little children and to teens. Mm -hmm. Um, or maybe kids in their in their early twenties. So so they didn't want it to be too childish, right? Uh, so building these patterns helped a lot. Did you do this those is, patterns first, yeah. or that little strip first? I didn't understand. Yeah, Jonah, can yeah. you ask your question more clearly? Uh, yeah. Did you build the box first or that strip on the right first? 
No, this is part of the identity. You build okay. the identity first, and then you do the applications. I but I like to present this. Is, remember, this is a Behance presentation. So I, so I need to show the, the, the strip that I designed from the building blocks mm -hmm. and how they are implement, implemented uh, on actual products. And this is the other um, typo, typography, the typography design. Mm -hmm. This one font is replicated in an outline to give you a clean, uh, clean design. Uh, print your imagination mm -hmm. um, is some sort of a tagline. And you wrote that? Yeah. Nice. That's good. You know, I like yeah. that. Uh, okay, hold on. Go back up a little bit. I like that you have this outline version of fun, like fun, 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 like it's, like it's working on it and it fills it from the bottom to the top. Now that whole explanation at the beginning, how you research, how these 3D printers work, and you guys know the filament spins from the bottom and it works its way up, right? So that's how yeah. it's being filled in from the bottom to the top. So in a graphic way, you're hinting at how it's made and it's very smart design. Really good job. Thank you, Chris. This is this is exactly what you said. This is the importance of the decision making uh, uh, slide. Mm -hmm. It talks about having things centered and in, in a vertical uh, application. Mm -hmm. And again, the font is Montserrat, one of my favorites. And I've read in the comments that many people said it's one of their favorites yes. as well. <laughs> this is coincidental. Both of you guys are using Montserrat, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. All right. It's very well because it's an elegant uh, elegant font that is also very geometric. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a, a, a font to use on the logo. I built it from scratch. So I chose a font that could be uh, very close to the... A good compliment. Uh, yeah. Yes. And this other part of the identity, I took the building blocks and gave it a one color. Mm -hmm. The pattern, it goes behind uh, designs. I'll show you some applications. Here's another uh, GIF. Nice. Okay. People like the GIFs. Keep them coming. Yeah. It's a dynamic logo. It, mm -hmm. it needs to be dynamic. I like that it cycles through. That's pretty cool. Oh, and the watch. Here's an Apple Watch, because it ha it has an application. One of the the um, implementations of this uh, project should be um, uh, digital um, and uh, on, on a software, uh, a digital watch, a website, a mobile application. Here's some billboards, ads, using the same Ooh. stuff. Here's a skateboard. Okay, now you're talking about language. Yeah. Talking about language right now with that skateboard. Yeah. This is the strip. Here's the, the pattern, mm -hmm. the other pattern, that one. And the stickers are uh, a huge part of the identity because stickers can um, attract people and uh, they will ask each other, especially kids, uh, what are these? What do they uh, reflect? And they, they will tell them about the business. Here are some posters. Whoa, posters. Okay. Let me look at these things. So now the, the dynamic logo, you don't have to use the same logo every time. Mm -hmm. You can use any one of the variations and they people will relate it uh, to the main uh, logo immediately, as long as you're consistent. Really smart here. I want to break down the posters for one second. Oop, can you go back? So you're showing okay. the 3D printed object and you're using kind of a monotone, duotone way to represent each object that you're building. So that's the result of what you do. And you're showing the smile of the person, the reaction or emotional thing. But I also like how you crop the person as if the person is being 3D printed too and you put the fun box on top. A lot of sophisticated thinking going on in here. I like it. Good job. Thank you, Chris. Here's the app icon. I took the you and the smile mm -hmm. and made it doesn't you don't need the entire logo to be in here mm -hmm. okay here are some uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. stuff. <laughs> this is where we have the spongebob three years later <laughs> <laughs> i keep going another variation of how, how how you can use the logo and um a fast ui design the imagination the digital magic and it's printed it's go, it will be, of course, animated. I didn't animate that. Uh, 
<laughs> Wait, I, I want to just pause one second. I want to prompt everybody that's watching us, all 320 of you guys that are still on the live stream with us. How many more applications does Hadil have left in this scroll? Just put it, type in a number. They're like, it's going to end. No, it's not ending. And it's just like fire, fire, fire emoji. Okay. This is the final one. But I usually tell, uh, tell people and tell designers, don't go over six mock-ups. Yeah. But when, when it, uh, it's needed, uh, if it have <laughs> many applications, yes. I know why so, you tell designers do that because the reason why Hadil says do not do more than six applications for your mockups is because when she comes on the show, she's going to do 36 and <laughs> she's going to embarrass you. She wants to outnumber you. <laughs> she wants to outnumber you. <laughs> I like that strategy very much. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Last one. What are we doing? Um, this is this is the original logo. Okay. Okay. And this is the final dynamic logo that I did. Awesome. Great job. Everybody, round of applause, please. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I'm standing, so there's a standing ovation for you. I'm automatically doing that. The guys should get up, but that's okay. Now, really amazing, thorough job. It's almost like we can't call this logo therapy anymore. We have to call this brand identity design therapy because it's too much. It's just, it's exploding at the seams. I don't even know. I just can't even imagine what Hadil is going to do for us. The, the next time she comes on the show, it'll be a four hour show. <laughs> 1,700 mock-ups and applications. She wrote the ad campaign. She's Made designed app, the website. Yeah. She built the app, and it's working. It's functional. It's like it's just through the roof. Okay. Going to send us wow. a product sample? <laughs> we have product samples for the show. <laughs> she actually built a 3D printer just for the show. Okay. A lot of questions coming in, but first, but first, I need to take a look at your final logo. I had a few things in there that I was like, eh, I just want to look at it real tight. Can we do that? Yeah. Okay. Can Can you jump into AI for me, or did, or yeah. that's not possible? No, no. Okay, I'm I ready. want to go full screen. Ooh, now we get to see what's the magic behind the curtain. Behind the scenes. <laughs> okay, can we zoom my even tighter? Just zoom in. Let's fill that sucker up to the screen because I'm looking at a monitor. That's my eyesight's not that uh good. Okay, there were some questions from people. I'm just gonna let you know what what they're saying because I read your comments, everybody that they thought the F was a little bit on the low, the crossbar. I don't have a problem with that. It's, like I said, it was a lower X height, you know? But it's cool. It's got a fun vibe to it. So it fits within the world of the product, the the, the target market that you're focusing on. Everything is great. The, the X, they're like, there's some comments like they didn't like the X. I like the X a lot. It's unusual because if you cut it off the normal way that you do an X, it just becomes another, another letter. I like it. Here's where I'm having some problems. The B. The B, the mm. way that the the top bowl of the B it tapers in that little point that connects between the top and the bottom of the B feels yes I, I would just say optically I would pull that out to the right to kind of make that more balanced you know so it will take a little bit of work but somewhere in there yeah. will be a really balanced B I already am feeling a little bit better about that right now and I don't want to okay. art direct you how to do this but I, I really just blown away just like poof, steam's coming out of my ears right now it's like wow Really great job, just tremendous. I, I'm scared to invite you back on the show because you will have no time left for real work because all you'll be doing is future episodes with us. This is so amazing. Thank you so much, right? Yeah. Thank all you, right. Chris. Very good job. I, I'm just curious for both of you guys first. Questions about mock-ups. I would love to ask you guys next time to do a little video on one of the more challenging mock-ups that you do because everybody's seeing this, it's amazing, and then it's like, you guys disappear, and then you come back, mock-ups, ta-da! So they wanna know how you did the mock-ups, and maybe you guys can just talk us through this. So I'm gonna kick it back to Marcus first, and I'm gonna return to Hadil, and then we're gonna wrap up the show. So Marcus, how did you do that flag in the stadium? Give Where'd you get the image from, and how did you do that? Can we do Hadil first? Okay, we'll do Hadil first. Okay, so Hadil, in terms of your mock-up, which one was the most challenging for you to do? And can you talk us through the process? You don't have to show it, but just talk us through it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very simple thing, Chris. You get really good mock-ups, ready-made ones. Okay. Uh, and just edit the file in, in Photoshop if you feel like uh, the lighting is not uh, doing you good or something. I see. Okay. Some mock-ups I buy myself just like the t-shirt on the girl. Mm -hmm. I got the from Shutterstock and I added the, the pins that I did mm -hmm. and this um, of the pattern but uh, generally get good mock-ups uh, uh, buy them buy them 
And is there a source that you go to to buy mock-ups? Mock-up world. Mock-up what? Mock-up world. World? Really? Yeah. Look at that. Dropping resources on you guys right now. Mock-up world. Okay. And where else? Anything else? There, there's another one. It's called Yellow Pages. Oh, Yellow Pages? Yeah. And you can find good good free ones on Graphic Burger as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, I know. I'm familiar with Graphic Burger. There are so many um, good uh, websites for, for free ones. But the free ones get, um, um, how do you say it, uh, used by everyone. They are used by everyone. I see. They are not the unique enough. Yes. So in some mockups, I always uh, set a budget. And I invest in fonts and uh, and uh, mockups. They, um, I, as I say every time, mockups sells. Mo- oh, but- really, mockup sells. All right, there yeah. we go. They do. They really do. Because yeah. what you're doing is, when you design a logo, when you design a logo, it, it can be very simple in its execution, and then the clients are like, "Well, why did I pay you all that money?" You take that same logo, you put it on a waving flag, you put it on the side of a building, you put it around a package, and like, wow, you're a genius. I'm glad I paid you so much. It really comes down to that. It's really weird. It's about closing the imagination gap because people aren't great at visualizing, especially non-creatives, non-designers, okay? So that's definitely something you want to do. So I, I, I want to just recap a little bit about what Theo is saying. If you get the free ones, which is totally fine, especially as you're starting out because you don't have a lot of money, just buy the free mockups. They're built for you. Just swap out files and it works. So the problem then there is everybody uses the same free ones. And so then your work starts to look like everybody else's. So if you go and buy some of the, the ones that cost money, at least you, there's a better selection usually. And there's... Oftentimes they're built a little bit better, so you have a little bit more ability to tweak them and change colors or change the lighting. And they, they usually provide several finishes, like different gold or metallic finishes, and you can do that. So you invest a little bit in the mock-ups, and it go a long way. Mock-up sells, according to Hadio, and I agree 100%. Mockupworld.com, yellowpages.com. We don't make any money off that. And Graphic Burger, you guys can look that up. So Hadio, yes. It's yellow, sorry, yellow images, said- right? Well, I'm saying it's yellow images. Yeah, it's yellow images. I thought you came up with a new one. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hadil's personal library, Yellow Pages. Yeah, yellow images is amazing. They, this just one, look it up. Chris. Look it up. Okay. Now, I guess then really what you're saying to me, and, and I, I want to make a point of this, is that when you're designing, it's the designer who's trying to find the right mock-up to tell the story that is appropriate, mm-hmm. that really captures the imagination and fires up your client. And that's really your job. So building it is a chore and not necessarily a good use of your time. Now, if none exists, go build one. But if they exist already, just find the right one in ArtDirect and put it in. The last question I want to ask you is this, before we turn it back to Marcus, is this. Is to do such thorough work like this, if this were for a real client, how much would you charge to do this? So um, I'm raising my prices. And this the the last couple of months, mm-hmm. uh, I'm used to uh, charging five Ks for mm-hmm. logos mm-hmm. starting, and I'm aiming to start at ten Ks. Ten K. Okay, so do to do this work moving forward, and we're moving forward. We we only look forward to the future, right? If you want to hire Hadil and you want her to do this kind of really amazing, extensive research and design exploration and mockups and everything. It's going to cost you 10k, right? Now, Hadio, as as a as a, a token of my appreciation for you, the next time a client calls you and you need help, call me. I'll negotiate for you. I'll get you a lot more money than that. Okay? Agreed. Okay, so just let me know and we'll work it out in my schedule. I'm not just saying that. I really do mean it. If you need me to help you negotiate, I can get you more money than than what you're getting. And I like to see that. I like to see a a woman, a woman from some place other than America doing this amazing work and doing what you're doing. It's fantastic. And you really reinforce the message that I've been saying out there, which is the global design market is incredible. Now, what we need to do is get everybody in the larger design community outside of the Western markets to get the same fair pay, same value, same worth as everybody else in the world. And and that's one of my missions. Okay. So I'm just really thrilled to see you do what you do. You're proving a point for me. So thank you very much. Now, let's start return back to Marcus. Marcus, how'd you yeah. do your mock-up, man? 
Um, basically, it's exactly the same as Hedel. So it's yellow images or graphic burger, and the last one, the flag. Yes. The flag. This actually was um, a mock-up from Behance. So there's a couple of free sport mock-ups. Really? Mock yeah. I didn't even know that was true. Wow. Mock-ups of Behance. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. You guys learn yeah, something new every single day. Would you hmm. just look at that? Now look at that. <clears throat> huh. Okay. Very good. Wow. Okay. So do I assume correctly that you have a subscription to Yellow Images because it's a lot cheaper to have a sub, right? Um, I just, I just um, the um, T-shirt mock-up I just um, discovered yesterday, so oh, I bought it. You just bought one, okay? Bucks, yeah. Yeah. If you buy the subscription, I think it's super cheap, and they'll build custom ones for you. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because a friend of mine turned me on to Yellow Images, and they will. I, I don't even know how they do this. They'll build a custom one for you if they don't have what you what you want. Amazing. Okay, cool. Marcus. Really great job, Hadil. Great job, you guys. Like when you pick that shield, I am just gonna be really honest. Like God, every single time, like why did they pick these ones? Like it's so complicated. How can they make this one better? And every single time, you guys deliver. Thank you very much. And I want to appreciate every single person who's tuned in today to watch the two of you work and share your process. So I'm asking on the behalf of our entire audience, please next time show us a little bit about how you're doing your mockups. I know it's very easy for you guys to do. Maybe you can even show us how you're looking for them. And when you find the right one, what you do with it, just so they can see how easy it is. Those of us that use mockups on a regular basis, especially ones that you pay for that you don't have to build from scratch, we realize it's super easy. You just swap the file out and you're good to go. So for a lot of people who don't know what that is, let's just show them next time, okay? All right, thank you very much. We're going to wrap up the show. We went a little bit long today and we had a false start, but thank you very much for everybody tuning in. If you want to know how to get your logo critiqued, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're having a case of FOMO, fear of missing out, Make sure you go to The Future's Facebook page, The Future on Facebook. There's a post that says, Submit your logo to be critiqued. And Hadil and, every, uh, and Marcus and everybody else that's part of the logo therapy crew will be looking through their combing through. So make sure you submit. Make sure you submit. And they're looking for something that catches their eye. Okay? And that's it for us today, you guys. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. If you want to be notified, hit that bell icon. Loving everybody that's a part of this community, whether you're a sustaining member or not. Still appreciate you. Thanks for being part of the Future Fam, part of the donation. Let's get out of here. Where's my music? See you guys later. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye.